Hope you have your own victory with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, tonight we have Daniel from New Jersey and his wife is here and uh, they're going to minister us through the word. So folks, I want you to, to uh, pay attention, listen up. Uh, so I just want to have one, 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 one more prayer, Father. Father. Heaven, oh God, please uh, help out tonight, Lord. May your spirit just minister accordingly about Brother Daniel as he opens up the word of God and may it just fall on, on good seed, Father. I pray if someone here that's heard the gospel again and again and again and again and just never made a connection, that your mercy and your grace and your long suffering, you will reveal yourself to them and be a lady and a man and a father. Oh God, pray for, for believers that are here. Amen. Amen. That, that they would hear and they would grow and they would grow closer and work with you through what happens tonight, Father. I will give you praise and honor. Oh God, be with Brother Daniel here, Lord. Anoint him just an extra blessing, Father. Give the words that you want him to say, Father. We will give you the praise and the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 shepherd boy, right? He would look after sheep. It wasn't anything crazy. 
But you see, David, he couldn't even wear the armor and the sword that Saul was giving to him to fight the giant. He, didn't, he couldn't even hold that. He couldn't even put that on. He had fought a lion and a bear before, but a war-trained giant, that was a totally different story for him, right? So what gave David his boldness? Trusting in God. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37, we'll also you'll, you'll get this background here. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So you see right there, David already had these instances in his life where he was already trusting God when it came to taking out a bear, taking out a lion. So he was going to do the same exact thing when going forward with the giant. As the Word of God says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse, or 28, verse 1, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. You see, the wicked will flee when no man pursues them, but the righteous are bold. Uh, those that do right and know that they're doing right, they're going to stand by that and they can stand strong. They're not going to falter. They're not going to flee. They're not going to scurry. They have no reason to turn and run and hide. They're going to stand on what's right, stand on the promises of God, and that will give them boldness. As far as today goes, we won't be fighting any giants in the physical realm or will we, right? But you can most certainly gain a spiritual application from this story. You see, David used a single stone to drop a giant. So you ask yourself, what can you use? The word of God. The King James Holy Bible. We stand upon that. God gave us his word. Perfect, inspired, infallible, preserved, holy word. He gave that to us. Are you bold enough to believe that and stand upon that? The lost world out there, a lot of people, that they don't tell you. They, they actually reject that, that God, the creator of all, the reason that we're here, they don't believe that he can give us his word perfect and preserved, inspired and without us. They don't believe it. The King James Holy Bible is the word of God. Right now. That's your stone. The word of God, you hold that up, that, that will help you against any spiritual goliaths that you may face out in the world today. This is how you discern. You use discernment against right doctrine, wrong doctrine, false teachings, heretical teachings, and the word of God. You've got to understand how you can rightly divide the word, as we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Right? You've got to study to show thyself approved, the word of the God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When, when you stand for what's right with God, and you stand by his holy word, when you boldly stand by that, God will honor that, see that, and be with you. Trust God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. That's another thing. A lot of people, they use their, their human understanding. Their, they, we can't comprehend the level of God. Don't be trusting in your own heart, your own understanding, your own feelings, but God's word. Faith pleases God. We find that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right? It's not just looking for him, passing him by, diligently seeking him, my friends. The word of God is likened to a sharp sword. If whoever has their Bible, if y'all please turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You see where the word of God is likened to a sharp sword. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick. And powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There is nothing like this King James Bible right here. Amen. When you read this, it's reading you. And I I know at first I used to think that's that's a load of garbage. I, I didn't believe that at one point in my life. I was not raised up in church. I was not raised up in a Bible-believing church. I, I just thought this was another book like anything else. 
until I read it, until I studied it out, until I actually started, so to say, playing devil's advocate and really studying this thing out and wondering, what, why, what's up with this book? Why this book? Why is the world coming so strongly against this, right? This is sharp. You read this, it will read Amen. you. It will read you, my friend. Amen. This is your sword today. This is what you need to overcome any battles. It is literally the word of God. The word of God tells us that we can have confidence in his word. Just as a soldier back in the day would trust their sword and their shield, just as a soldier today will be trusting their rifle. This, the word of God, this is what you've got to have and trust today, my friends. If you all would please turn to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 11 to 16. Ephesians 3, 11 to 16. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 11. According to the eternal purpose which he has purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. You see that? We have boldness and access with confidence by what? Faith in him. Faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all given a measure of faith, believe it or not. You can find that in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. And that says, Romans 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according, as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. You see, my friends, it all comes down to faith. It all comes down to faith. And whether you are ready to embrace that faith, to, faith, to accept it or reject it, that's where your free will choice will come in. God is not going to force you to believe in it. I don't want to force anyone to believe this book. I encourage you to pick it up, read it, study it, meditate upon it for yourself. Amen. Seek the truth. The Lord will see your heart. And don't bless you for it. You go forward with him. Continuing on. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 13. Wherefore I desire that ye think not of my tribulations for you, which is your glory. See that Jesus is Christ requires that you don't faint at the tribul uh, tribulations, troubles, and trials that come across you in your Christian path. You not fainting, having boldness, having faith with Christ to move forward, will give you glory all through the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Again, you gain your strength from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will carry you forward. As you find in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, Jesus Christ said this himself. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you're bold enough to stand for Christ, rest assured he'll be there in the yoke with you, going right with you. He will continue to carry you forward even if you stumble, backslide, you fall into troubles. Rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you get the yoke with him, he will carry you forward. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, we, we may not be fighting any physical giants today, but we definitely see some spiritual ones, right? In Ephesians chapter 6, we dive into spiritual warfare that we will face as modern day Christians, right? When you write and divide the word Romans through Philemon, the 13 Pauline epistles are directed to us in the church age. Ephesians is talking quite literally about the spiritual battles that we are facing today. Now, whether you believe it or not, spiritual warfare is being waged upon you. If y'all would please turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We'll go over some of these, uh, what the Bible would tell us, who is our enemy and who we're against. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right? The Bible tells you crystal clear. It's not about anyone down here. It's all spiritual wickedness that we're facing today. And I'm sure y'all, anyone paying attention, you can see how the world has went from when y'all were children, y'all were younger, how it is now. You yeah. see the decline. I, I know I think kind of, you know, I don't want to harp on that. Spiritual wickedness in high places. It's coming out like crazy. And here we find our enemy and who we're up against. But a lot of people will ask, well, how do we fight something we can't see? How do, how do we do that? Well, that's a great question. Answer to the next verse. In verse 13, we see about putting on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Yeah. Did you catch that? Right at the end. To stand. You know, I find it interesting. The Word of God, it mentions about putting on your spiritual armor. Never once will it ever mention about taking it off. Right? Once you put this spiritual armor on, you got to keep it on. Keep going forward for the cause of Christ. Literally read over Ephesians chapter 6 and just read through it daily. It'll, it'll tell you exactly what the armor is. you got to be bold, stand, stand upon the word of God. And David had no physical armor when he fought Goliath, but he had faith. And his faith was spiritual armor that he needed. And we can grab hold of that today. In the next couple of verses, we see what the armor of God is. This is your spiritual armor. Found that in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It's through your faith. Trusting in God's word that you will be able to quench the fiery darts that are coming at you. And take the helmet of the salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Right? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. You're going to get tired. Especially if you are a Bible-believing Christian that's walking around in a Christ-rejecting world, you're going to get tired. You're going to get weak. You're going to get worn out. Sure, that can be frustrating. What does the Word of God tell us to do? To stay standing. Amen. Be bold. Put yourself in the yoke with Christ. Cast your burdens upon Him. He literally tells you to do that, right? He tells you to cast your burdens and worries upon Him. It's Jesus Christ who will strengthen you going forward. It's his word that's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, continuing forward, we got Ephesians 6, verses 19 to 20. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Did you know that if you are saved this evening, you are called an ambassador to the Lord Jesus Christ? So some people might be wondering, what's an ambassador? I'll tell you. It's a person sent as the chief representative of his or her own gov government or country. An ambassador is an official representative or messenger, right? Now, if you find in Scripture, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. This is not our spiritual home or country. If you're a born again, saved, Bible believing follower, the Most High God, Jesus Christ, the Creator of all that is seen and unseen, this is not our spiritual home or country. But we are ambassadors to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're a representative for the Lord Jesus Christ. That should have you living a little differently, right? The creator of all, the creator of your mind, body, soul, and spirit. 
You're trying to worship, follow him, live by him. Well, if you're saved, if you're born again, you are officially an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. You should be living like it, right? Amen. Speak boldly for the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the only begotten Son of God, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Speak boldly for him. Live for the Lord Jesus Christ. When you see everything in the world going the opposite direction of this book right here, that should make you wonder. It should make you wonder. Everything going on today is biblical, my friends. Everything is going contrary to the Word of God. I find that interesting. That's something that helped me to really wake up to what this book is. Everything is going opposite of what this book says. So I chose in a Christ-rejecting world. I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to go. I'm going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. I say all that to say this: the Word of God is our weapon in the spiritual battle that we're in today. The Word of God tells us how to suit up and that we're to be bold by Him. It all comes down to faith. And standing up on the promises of God. You want to be more like Christ? I get that question sometimes. All right, I'm going to give you something right here. Did you know, just, just follow what he did. Follow what Christ did. There's three different points in Matthew chapter 4 that I'm going to go over. Hold on. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 4 is going to be the first point. Then... Was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of of God. That's point one. Point two, we're going to keep it rolling. Matthew chapter four, and it's going to be verses five to seven. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. We're going to go to part 3 here. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. Again, the devil taketh him up to an exceeding high mountain, and show him, showeth him all the kingdoms and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. Now, you catch that. Even in, in part two, Satan even tried to use the word of God against God. Every single time, these three different times where Satan was tempting the Lord Jesus Christ, what did he say? It is written, it is written, it is written. Every single time, Jesus Christ went back to, now they didn't have the Bible back in the day, they had the scripture. But this is what he's talking about. It is written. My friends, the devil then departs. You see how powerful that is. Jesus refers to the scripture himself to deter the devil. Again, you find in Matthew 4, 6, is the devil, Satan will even try to use the term, it is written. You're even going to have people that come at you, don't believe that this is the word of God, yet use it as the word of God to try and trip you up. And that's why you've got to study to show thyself approved. You've got to know this sword for yourself to be able to, to wield it, to know how to go about it. This is why it's detrimental to know the word for yourself, to seek out the truth for yourself. If y'all please turn to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. We'll go about our next part here. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. 
so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. You shouldn't fear what lost men are going to do. Listen, especially if you're proclaiming Jesus Christ, you're holding up the word of God. You say that you believe that the King James Bible is the word of God. You're going to have haters. You're going to have people that come against you and just want to badmouth you. you got to keep going forward. That, that's, a, that's a mark of the Christian walk. You're going to deal with people that are coming against you that don't believe that this is the word of God. Well, they're going to try and take your head off of that. Keep going for Christ, put your faith, and be bold in the Lord's promises. Amen. So uh, a lot of times, you know, I'll go out street preaching and I'm on a corner and I see, you know, there's a lot of people that may come up to me or uh, the guy standing next to me and they try to start problems. Then they walk away and really you got to ask yourself, is what you're doing pleasing to God or pleasing to men? Because men... They want to be lifted up. They can't take when you spiritualize things or like, hey, I'm not trusting on me. I'm trusting on God. I'm trusting on his word. People get a little uh, hectic when that happens. But at the end of the day, you know what I say to that? Forget about it. <laughs> Those that are going to come against you, they're going to come against you regardless. You've got to keep going forward to the cause of Christ. Have faith and be bold in the promises of God. Now, boldness is a mark of spirit empowerment. We find that in Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 41. And it's granted in response to prayer amidst persecution. So you're going to have persecution if you're going forward in this world. you got to keep going forward, right? Live for God, not for lost men that are just trying to get you off your path, right? Paul, our apostle... Praise to increase in boldness in Ephesians 6.20, also Colossians 4.4. 4. And in each instance, boldness is not a general character attribute, but it is a specific grace for the proclaiming of the word. And I'm sure by now we all know that we're living in some wild times. It's biblical. It's literally biblical. Pick up the word of God and read it yourself. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not trying to force anything down anyone's throat. I'm telling you, I picked up this book, the King James Only Bible. I read it. I believed it. And once you, you believe this, and then you look at the world around you, you'll see everything happening today is biblical. Bible prophecy is literally jumping off the pages like never before. <laughs> I won't tell you. Again, Read the book, read Genesis through Revelation, look at what God's word says. This book is unfolding in front of us. Most people don't know because they think that oh, it's just a book. Or people got caught up in the, the iPad generation, they want to see flashing lights, they want to see noises, none of this. Uh -oh, this. This is the book. Okay. But some people are going to look at this and like, ah, no, I don't got time for that. As Brother Tim was saying before, it would be a shame to die without accepting what the Lord Jesus Christ has did for you. It's all in his words, and it's unfolding today. That's, one, that's something that helped me in my walk. Studying out biblical prophecy that's come to fruition, and archaeological finds that give validity to the Bible. There's places in this Bible that you can find in this world. Go out there, you got to research it. I'm telling you, believe, read it, believe it, apply it to your life. Now is your chance more than ever to be a bold witness for Christ. Yeah. Now is your time to do something for God. He died for you. Would you want to do something for him? I know any one of y'all, when somebody does something nice for you, don't you want to return the favor? Yeah. At least if you do something small, you know. Jesus Christ died for you. You took on your sin, your past, present, future sin. Yeah. He gave you a way, the way, the truth, and the life. He gave you a way for eternal life. And again, he won't force you. God's a gentleman. He puts it out there, the free gift of salvation, unto those that want it. And you can accept it or you can reject it. That's your free will choice. Don't pray. Don't, don't cave to the pressures of this lost world. Live for God. Seek God. Seek out the truth. Pray to God. The Lord. Pray for the Lord to give you truth. Have you ever done that? 
I know, I know we go online and we, and we look at whatever pops up on Google, whatever fake algorithm is being pushed on the left or the right. I'm not talking about that. Have you ever prayed for God to reveal the truth to you? If not, I encourage you to do that tonight. Perfect time to start, right? So, wrapping it up here. What can you do to be a biblical, bold witness for Christ? Just do right. We all got a conscience, right? God gave you a conscience. You know when you're doing right or wrong. Uh, take, for example, a little kid. When a little kid, they, they don't know right off the bat when they come into the world right or wrong, but they do something and they 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 know. Ah, I should be right there. You know, I don't know about that. But your conscience, right? It's there. Just do right. Pass out gospel tracts. Go to a street corner. Sow the word of God into the hearts of anybody that you come across. Magnetic scripture signs you throw in your car or wherever you're at. Get to a local Bible-believing church and help out the brethren. Or you can reach out to people on social media. What we have here today, our forefathers could never do. Right? You can literally get online on a social media platform and put out a scripture that literally reaches hundreds if not thousands of people. Telling you, yeah, all this is going to come out the judgment seat of Christ. The, the rewards are so easy if, if you're Christ minded. That's really what it comes down to. Putting Christ first above anything else. You see, just as there are many different working parts in the human body, there are many different working parts and positions in the body of Christ. Now, when you get saved, a born-again believer, you are grafted in spiritually into the body of Christ. There are many different jobs and positions that you can do. Even if you don't have the boldness or don't want to go on a street corner, don't want to put yourself out there, you could pray. Something as small as that, but it's really not that small to God. It's not that small to the people that are going out there on the street corner hoping they don't get a shot. Hope we don't get stabbed. It's like, okay, well, I hope someone's praying for me. Or I, I pray that God is looking over me. Whatever happens, the Lord wills. But if you can't get out there, be a prayer warrior. That's doing something as a part of the body of Christ. In conclusion, pick up the King James Holy Bible. Read it. Study it. Meditate upon it. Seek the word of God. This is your backbone. Rely on it. This is your stone. Have faith in it. This is your sword. Wield it and keep it sharp. Know this book. And I'm telling you, your eyes will be opened to what this world really is and what's really going on. Lord willing. Pray to the Lord when you read this book. Pray before you open it up. God. Help me, to, help me to see something. Just help me today. I'm trying to get to know you. God will see the intents of your heart. Like I said, when you read this book, God, reading God's word, it's, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. When God sees you seeking him out, I'm telling you, he will meet with that. You have a humble, lowly, and meek heart, and you just want the truth no matter what it is, God will be there with you and he will help you out of your prayers. Most importantly, rely upon the promises of God. If y'all have never heard this before, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but through him. Amen. That is going to be offensive to the lost world, right? You got Oprah out here saying, oh, there's many different paths, there's many different ways. It's a load of garbage. That ain't it. No. It's not through Muhammad, Buddha, all these other false religions out here. I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus Christ, there's something different with them. And again, don't take my word for it. I don't want anyone to take my word for it. Pick up the Bible and read it for yourself. I'm telling you, it'll change your life just as it's changed mine. I just wanted the truth. And I pray for God to reveal that truth to me. As found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're saved by grace through faith. Faith in what? 
Faith in the gospel, the gospel of our salvation, found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. The word of God tells you to have a childlike faith, right? To believe the book, to believe God, to study out his word and just believe him. Salvation is so simple a child can get saved by believing that Jesus Christ died for me. He died for me. He was buried, rose from the dead three days later, according to the scripture. Uh, I believe and accept that he took that on my sin at Calvary 2,000 years ago. He lived a sinless and perfect life that I couldn't live, yet he died the life that I, I should have died on that cross for my sin, for what I've done wrong against the holy, perfect, righteous God. That's what Jesus Christ did. He atoned for each and every one here tonight. He atoned. He had died for the sin of the world. Past, present, and future. Amen. The ball is in your court. You can accept it or you can reject it. And again, that's the thing. I'm not forcing anyone to believe what I'm saying. I encourage you to read the Bible for yourself. King James 16, 11, Holy Bible. Pick it up, read it, study it, meditate upon it. Um, as we find in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any shall perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right? The Lord doesn't want anyone to go to hell. But if you choose to reject the payment, that's the payment to getting into heaven. Sinlessness, perfectness, that's why Jesus Christ came and died for your sin. He lived that sinless and perfect life and gives you the opportunity, if you want it, to get drafted in. Right? So he doesn't want anyone to perish, but again, God will not force anyone to do anything. And uh, the choice will be yours. I just, I pray y'all pick up the King James Bible, read it for yourself, seek salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, I pray this is a blessing to some of y'all. Let's just uh, say a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for bringing me out of here. Thank you for everybody who showed up the night word. I pray that you bless them going forward. I pray that the scripture that was read tonight, Lord, I pray that it is so deep into the hearts and the minds and the views of everybody that are in tonight, Lord. And I just pray that uh, I pray that your will be done. I pray that your spirit, that you just help everyone going forward, Lord, and to rely on you and everything that you've done for us in Calvary. And I thank you for it, Lord. I give you all the glory of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Mike is up here. If you never trust the Lord Jesus Christ, that verse he quotes from Peter, that way that ancient you Paris. We're always on an open invitation here at the mission. If you never trust the Lord, about to let the redeemed Lord say so. Let us know. We're happy to open up the scripture and confirm it with you through prayer or through some agreement, Lord, and talk to the Lord. And a uh, believer, if you're here and you want to be bold, boldness, you can ask the Lord for it. Get it from the Word of God. So we're always here for prayer, questions on the Word. We'll be here afterwards if we dismiss. Remember the, the things we have here. And also, I've got uh, my wife's bookmarkers here. And so you're welcome to come and get them while they last. So, uh, brother and sister, men and ladies, thank you very much for coming. Praise the Lord. We're here to help you with any scripture uh, questions you have or trust in the Lord. No problem. Thank you very much. Amen.